President Biden has swept every Democratic contest of the 2024 presidential election calendar so far, except for one. Jason Palmer beat the president in American Samoa. And if you're asking who is Jason Palmer, well, you're not alone. Palmer is a Baltimore resident with a background in business and nonprofits, largely unknown before his Super Tuesday victory in the territory. And he has been campaigning remotely and doing some town halls on Zoom. He's also campaigning on social media, posting this on Monday. Washington, D.C. is long overdue for a president who will be an advocate for American Samoa. Super Tuesday, voters in the U.S. territory responded by casting 51 out of 91 votes for Jason Palmer. American Samoa, no stranger to unusual voting outcomes. In 2016, a majority of caucus goers cast ballots for uncommitted delegates rather than for Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. And in 2020, former mayor of New York City, Michael Bloomberg, won there, giving him the only victory in his campaign. Representative Tulsi Gabbard coming in second, winning just two delegates, and Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders both with zero. Here to talk about the big win in American Samoa, Jason Palmer himself. Uh, sir, welcome to you. Thank you uh, for giving Thank us you. some of your time. Um, how has your life changed, your campaign been impacted by this win? Well, Marnie, my life has been thrown quite upside down, but in a good way where you know I'm being contacted by hundreds of media organizations who are interested in interviews and they're asking what is conscious capitalism how did you win in American Samoa and honestly I'm I'm honored by all the attention and I want to make sure I put it to the best possible good use so as I understand it you have never held political office we talked a bit about your background why do you want to be president yeah, I want to be president because we need someone in the White House who's focused on a positive, optimistic vision of the future and actually knows how to get there. As somebody who's been working as a venture capitalist and an impact investor for the last 20 years and an entrepreneur before that, I do see the future. The future is that we need to move our economy to conscious capitalism. The future is that we need to upskill millions of Americans to new collar jobs, which is actually what a lot of my companies have been doing over the last 10 years. And we need to kind of bring the nation back together. We need to restore civility. We need to restore bipartisanship. Like we need to make our government work for the people again. And it's very disappointing how the people in Washington right now seem more focused on scoring political points than actually helping the American people. Realistically speaking, though, it's a numbers game, and this election season, the president has already racked up 19 Democratic contests across the country. American Samoa uh, cannot participate in the uh, election in November. How do you move forward? What is your next step using your voice in this platform and the attention you're getting? Yeah, I know most traditional political candidates would say, you know, I'm still trying to win. That's my goal. And but I'm a realist. I've been investing in companies for a long time. And if you're in business, you know, you have to be pragmatic. My goal right now is to win as many delegates as possible in the primaries where I am competing. And those that are coming up are Arizona, Missouri, Kansas, Northern Marianas Islands, which is another uh, U.S. territory, which actually is overlooked and needs additional resources. Um, this is the most important election of our generation. If we're, as Democrats, want to win this fall, we need to get young people energized, we need to get independents energized, and I think I have an important role to play as somebody who is an entrepreneur that works with entrepreneurs. There's a possibility of building a whole movement of young people who want to take our government back, and I plan to try to lead that movement. Yeah, fresh ideas, a 21st century candidate is what you call yourself. Uh, Biden's approval ratings right now, right around 40% or so, and I'm looking at a Biden versus Trump rematch come 2020 right now. Recent polling shows Trump ahead at 45, Biden with 43. What do you make of the state of, of a possible rematch come November and, and American sentiment around that? Well, the first thing I would love is for a polling organization to conduct a poll of me against Donald Trump and actually see who would win that matchup. I have a gentleman on my campaign whose name is Kwame Jackson. I believe Kwame Jackson is the only person who's worked for Donald Trump and also worked for Jason Palmer. He came in second place on The Apprentice. Uh, Kwame will be the first to tell you, you know, working for and working with someone like me means you're going to get collaboration. It means you're going to actually get positive energy. We're going to make the world a better place. 
With Donald Trump, the energy is all about grievance. It's all about himself. But all that said, he does speak to 70 million people. There's a reason why a lot of people think President Trump speaks for them. And we need to do a better job of reaching out to those Trump voters. A lot of them care about and run small businesses, which is a big part of what my background is as well. And we need to actually address their concerns. They have concerns about the border that aren't being addressed right now, immigration in general. They also have concerns about uh, the size of the federal government, that the federal government needs to reduce its budget deficits and get, you know, tighten up our belt, so to speak. Also, the current administration is too focused on foreign affairs and foreign wars. The American people want more investment in us, more investment here at home. And there is a way to do that. There is a way to still be a leader of the free world while simultaneously pulling in our belt and investing more in America. If 2024 is, is not your year, Jason, is this the beginning of your political career? Do you see a future in politics for yourself beyond uh, this election cycle? You know, I've always cared a lot about politics. I consider myself a patriot, but I am not sure if I am destined for polit politics evermore. Uh, I actually think that people should not go into politics for uh, their entire lives. I think it should be something that people serve a tour of duty for two years, four years, even 16 years, because you don't want to give back to the country. You want to serve in some way. And maybe this is a period of time where I do want to serve. I definitely feel like it, and I'm trying to step into the moment. Uh, but I don't think politics will be my career forevermore. I love building businesses. I love working with entrepreneurs. I always and still have a strong calling for that as well. Well, you struck an important thread there. I think career politicians has been one of the criticisms of Washington, uh, certainly as of late. Uh, Jason Palmer, it's been fun to chat with you. Uh, we'll be watching moving forward. Thanks for your time. Sir. Thank you so much, Marnie. I really appreciate you having me on. All right, you bet. Still